Colin Quinn, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you very much, Trevor. I miss you, my friend. It's been a long time since I've seen you. We haven't been doing stand-up in clubs. We haven't been doing stand-up on the road. Uh, how are you coping with, I mean, the thing that you've been doing your entire life just not existing in the way that it did before? It's very. It's been very strange. I, I uh, you know, I'm gracefully moving into my final years. I look out the window 40 times a day to check on the stores in the street. So, obviously, stand, that's, that's replaced stand-up for me. You, in my opinion, are the definition and the epitome of a New Yorker. You've seen every kind of New York. You know, you've got one of the greatest bits about how New York has gentrified and how it's changed over the years. So then, Colin Quinn, I have a question for you that only you can answer in my world. Do you think New York is dead? Um, I would say it's, it's definitely uh, in as bad shape as I've ever seen it. It's a different kind of bad. Like, in the 70s, it was a more crowded, violent bad. Now it's a deserted, I've never seen it this quiet before. And in some ways, I thought the subways would be cleaner and it would rejuvenate like Venice. You know, the fish came back to the canals. But no, the subways have eight people on it and they still smell like as, as if it's packed every day. It's, it's, it's remarkable. I am happy, not just for you, but for all your fans out there, that you have a book that I think can hold us over until we get past this thing because... Uh, your book, Overstated, A Coast-to-Coast -Coast Roast of the United States, is essentially, you know, uh, an extended version of the show that was critically acclaimed on Broadway. And you've done a ton of research. It's like a historical book, but then, like, part roast, part, part history book. Um, as someone who's done the work, do you think the State of the Union is strong? <laughs> I don't think anybody thinks that. I mean, this country is, you know, we're a... We're a bad marriage that needs counseling. You know what I mean? Like, if it was up to me, there would be constitutional conventions every year because this is critical. And if, but it would have to be like the constitutional convention. They didn't allow any press in because you realize once everyone gives their opinion, you're paral there's a paralysis because some, if anybody tries to do anything, right. everybody jumps in immediately. So until it's, you know what I mean? I believe in a, you know, a secret, the thing Americans hate the most, no transparency. <laughs> so, if you could, so if you could change America based on everything you've done, what you would do is have people meet to talk about the Constitution more, way, like just like a real emergency meeting every few years, go through it, but no press, no cameras, no talk, just like come out and be like, all right, this is what the new Constitution is going to be about. Yes, because it's too, I would get the smartest thinkers, not necessarily politicians, but real thinkers from each thing, and then do like, the mass singer, so you can't see them and they distort their voices so people can't attack them. <laughs> and so basically the person comes out, makes suggestions, and then after we see if we, we've selected the suggestion, they take the hat off and then we're like, oh my God, Ted Cruz, that was actually quite a liberal suggestion. And he goes, yeah, I was afraid to say it because I've been maintaining this image of being a douchebag. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah, Rob, you have Robin Thicke and Jenny McCarthy will be the judges on this thing too. <laughs> Um, as you've gone through the States, you have a deep love for the States, you have a deep love for the country, because you've been on the ground, you know? That's something that I love about being a stand-up is, man, we've been to the best and worst parts of every single state in America. You know, we've eaten at the shittiest diners and the best restaurants. You have an interesting perspective on this country. What are some of your pl favorite places that you've gone to where you go like, man, that place gets a bad rap, but it truly is a gem? Well, I mean, Florida, I, I'm in love with Florida, even though it deserves its bad rap. It deserves it, but I still love it because it's like some states are just America's unconscious. And Florida is one of those places where they're just like, hey, we're not pretending to be anything noble. Come down here. We're decadent. We don't care if you're 25. Come down. We'll get you a job as a DJ, dealing drugs, bartending, and then you just party the rest of your life. So I like the honesty of Florida. As somebody who's told jokes to every type of audience, You've always talked about America's political divide. When you talk to somebody who you, you feel like you've lost in your life to politics, like a lot of people talk about this. I've lost my family members. I've lost my friends. We used to disagree, but now we've cut each other off completely. Have you cut them off or have you found a way to break through with them? No, no, I don't cut anybody off. But I just, I tell, you know, I just say, listen, I think you're refusing to see, you're refusing any middle ground. And this whole country, the only thing it has is compromise. That's the only thing it has compromise. 
and and without that, you don't have you. It's gonna, it'll be a civil war, you know, and everybody knows it, but nobody people get you know re, people get into that space where they agree. How could you agree one hundred percent with either Democrat or Republican? How could you coincidentally agree one hundred percent with an agenda of anything? I don't even agree one hundred percent with my own feelings. How could you do that with some party or some idea? It's bizarre to me. Yeah, it's. I think. I think it's become like that because people are forced in America to choose one of two. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. if if you only have one of two options, it's going to create a permanent divide because basically what you do is like cable packages. You go like, I don't want some of these other channels, but I, I watch sports, so I'm going to take this package, but I don't want that package. I don't want the chat. I don't want everything else. It forces people to do that though, because you've only got two parties in America, so you're gonna have two people who are pitted against each other, which is the craziest thing ever. Yes, you're right, and the, the perfect analogy is it, and it's like, it's like it leads to conflict. That's why there's two boxers in a boxing match. If they had three or four, maybe a guy <laughs> would lay off. After a while, it's like, oh, I'll leave him alone. Oh, I gotta watch out for this guy. Um, the pandemic has been a nightmare for stand-up. Um, it's been a nightmare for audiences in every, every field. It doesn't matter. Live performances are just shut down. We've seen people trying to do something new during this period. And stand-ups, I mean, I've tried everything. Shows on Zoom, um, shows on Instagram, you know, shows in the park. You are one of the pioneers in that world as well, because if I understand correctly, you've shot a stand-up special, but it's also like partly a documentary. It, it's this whole hybrid thing. And you're doing stand-up at a drive-in? at a drive-in in in Brooklyn. And of course, your buddy Keith is there being very obstreperous. You know, I brought in all those cellar comedians. So they spend the whole time basically complaining and being ungrateful. When I call them, they're like, oh, that's great, thank you. Then when they get there, they just trash me and the whole experience the entire time. But we caught a lot of it on film, which is good, you know? What uh, what do you you hope to achieve with this? Because I I know you're a very methodical person. What are you trying to capture in this moment? I'm trying to capture the the pre-show energy like of our personalities right. and just how we are, you know, like like that we can get so irritable. Like even this special, they come in like they've been working the whole time, just trashing me, trashing the whole thing. But that's what we love. Like if comedian doesn't make fun of you, they don't like you. Well, I think I think you I think you're gonna capture it, my friend. I think people are gonna love it. I think people are gonna love the book because you've done the research, you tell the jokes, you're unfiltered, and it's the best opinionated thing I've ever read. So, Colin, thank you so much for joining me on the show again. Good luck out there. Uh, enjoy it, man. Don't leave New York. We'll we'll just stay here together. Uh, I love it. Okay. <laughs>